everyone. I'm Priyanka, and I'm the co-founder and CEO of Evie, and really excited to be talking to you today about the vaginal microbiome and how it relates to female health. I decided to start Evie after realizing a couple of the crazy facts that are here on the slide today. One was that women weren't required to be in clinical research in the U.S. until 1993. And to this day, women are on average diagnosed four years later than men across over 770 diseases. And what this says to me is that we have a huge data gap when it comes to our understanding of the female body. As uh, the NIH Associate Director uh, Janine Austin Clayton said, we literally know less about every aspect of female biology compared to male biology. And that's exactly what we're trying to solve here at EBI. We're on a mission to radically reinvent how we understand and treat the female body, specifically by discovering and leveraging female-specific biomarkers. And the first set of biomarkers that we're focused on is the, what's going on in the vaginal microbiome. And usually when I say that, I get one of two questions. Either what is the vaginal microbiome or why is that where we're starting? Given that we're at a, a microbiology conference, hopefully most people here have at least heard of the vaginal microbiome. But I figured that I'd give us a little bit of a start by just explaining uh, a very oversimplified 101 on what it is and why it matters. So what you see here on the slide is my very accurate depiction of what the vaginal microbiome looks like. But if you think about it, you know, like any microbiome, the vaginal microbiome is a community of bacteria, fungi, viruses, and other microbes that live in a certain part of our bodies, right? Just like the microbiome that lives in our gut or in our mouth or on our skin. Turns out we also have one in our vaginas. And what's really interesting is that what we've seen over time as we've started to research the vaginal microbiome is that much like many of the other bi microbiomes that we are also learning about, um, it looks like they're doing a lot more than just kind of hanging out in the vagina. Right. And if you think about the vagina as kind of the structural connection between the outside world, which is full of lots of different microbes and pathogens, and then on the other side, some of our most important internal reproductive organs, what we're starting to learn is that we've essentially co evolved with this community of microbes that live in the vagina and play what I would call almost like a local immune system role in protecting our reproductive system from a lot of the pathogens out in the outside world. And the way that this works is when your vaginal microbiome is in an optimal state, it's dominated by protective microbes, the most common of which are lactobacillus. And those protective microbes are producing lactic acid and making the vaginal environment acidic, which makes it hard for these disruptive microbes that might get into your vaginal microbiome to actually thrive, survive, or take up space on the vaginal wall. But, you know, I always say, God forbid women live their lives. Um, and, you know, you have sex with someone new, you sit in your swimsuit for too long, your period lasts a long time. All of those things might increase the amount of, uh, or sorry, increase the pH, which can then make it a more hospitable environment for pathogens to thrive, replicate, survive, etc. And as people with vaginas, the way that we actually experience this is those infections that we are all too familiar with, right? Bacterial vaginosis, recurrent yeast infections, recurrent UTIs, et cetera. But this breakdown in the vaginal environment is not just leading to these extremely frustrating infections. It turns out that, that without that protective dominance, right, that dominance of microbes that are keeping these disruptive microbes out, what we start to see is also an association with a variety of other female health outcomes, right? IVF failure, preterm birth, STI acquisition, cervical cancer progression, and more. And what I'm talking about here, right, this breakdown in the protective nature of the vaginal microbiome, this isn't a niche problem. It turns out that at any given time, almost 30% of people with vaginas have a dysbiotic vaginal microbiome. And in the U.S., vaginal discharge is the most common reason that women seek healthcare advice. So this is an extremely prevalent condition. It's also extremely frustrating, right? Most of the women who go into the doctor's office with symptoms and get treatment end up recurring. Their symptoms come back and they're unable to kind of get back to that protective microbe dominant vaginal environment. And on top of that, we're starting to see that this breakdown in the vaginal environment can then have huge implications on other female health outcomes, like I mentioned earlier, all of which are costing the system great amounts of money as well. 
So what we're starting to see is that these vaginal infections are not just prevalent, they're not just frustrating, it's that they're also extremely expensive to the system. And what's so incredibly frustrating to me as a person with a vagina is that bacterial vaginosis is still so misunderstood by the healthcare system today. Even though it is so prevalent, so frustrating, and so expensive, our clinical definition of bacterial vaginosis is still just an overgrowth of bacteria. And our clinical definition hasn't changed since we were able to actually use sequencing technology to look at what the microbiome actually looks like. That means that we haven't actually adjusted our clinical diagnosis practices or treatments since we actually could see what was going on. But thankfully, as all of you probably know very well, there's a lot more to the picture than what we do in the clinic today. And over the past couple of decades, a lot of incredible researchers have been using these newer technologies to illuminate what's actually happening in the microbiome when someone has BV. And using these much higher fidelity technologies to look at the microbiome, what we're starting to see is that in order to actually help someone with BV, it's going to require much more holistic, precise, and preventative care in order to actually get someone back to an optimal vaginal environment. And that's obviously what we're hoping to power with what we're building at Our first product that we launched in July of 2021, so just over a year ago, is an at-home vaginal microbiome test that allows anyone with a vagina to learn everything that's going on in her vaginal ecosystem, why it matters, and then also what she can do about it which really empowers every person with a vagina to build a much stronger understanding of their vaginal health, understand the research behind what we know and what we don't know about the vaginal microbiome, and feel empowered with the information and action that they can take to better understand how the vaginal microbiome relates to their overall health goals. And we're so lucky to be doing this in partnership with some of some incredible leaders across the clinical and research side of the spectrum who've been working on the vaginal microbiome, both with patients in the clinic, as well as in the research labs so that we can come up with much better diagnoses and treatments. And alongside our uh, incredible board, we've really been thinking about uh, the way we can leverage our platform in a few different ways. First is really focused on our members and patients today thinking about how can we actually provide every person with a vagina with a personalized understanding of their vaginal microbiome and how it relates to their overall health. So giving them a full picture of what's going on and how research might show that that's related to other things in their life that they care about. We've also been really focused on providing people with a full picture into the data and directing people directly to the research. We always say that it's our job to treat our members like they're smart enough to understand the nuances of the science that we're presenting them with. And it makes me laugh thinking back, you know, a year ago, we had many people telling us that, you know, women can't handle this information. They're going to be hysteric. You can't give this information to them. And obviously what we found is that by giving people information on their own bodies, it's actually the opposite. It's extremely calming. It's extremely empowering to feel like you actually understand what's going on in your body, how your behaviors are shifting it. And we've seen that kind of empower a lot more people to have more productive conversations with their partners and their doctors over time. And along the way, we've been extremely focused on also demystifying and destigmatizing vaginal health. As I said earlier, these are truly some of the most common problems that women deal with. And yet they are also problems that so many of us feel like we have to go through alone due to the incredible stigma, shame, and taboo that surrounds them. And we're very much trying to build educational platforms to meet people one-on-one, -on -one, to meet them in our individual communities, as well as at scale through TikTok and our blog to make sure that every person with a vagina has access to scientifically sound education about vaginal health. And what's been so exciting about kind of building this platform with the science and the data and bringing consumers along the way is that we've also been able to start doing improving on our clinical understanding of these conditions. And with our platform today, only one year in, what we're starting to find is that there are so many opportunities to create much, much better, better clinical applications that are more precise and holistic, right? So whether that means coming up with much more individualized definitions of health and disease that are stratifying what health and disease look like in different populations, 
or coming up with more tailored treatment strategies based on these much more specific uh, stratifications. And then also thinking about biomarkers for a lot of these broader female health outcomes that I measured, mentioned earlier. And what's been really exciting to see is that there is actually huge value in looking at the microbiome at a much higher fidelity than we had before. Um, what I'm showing you here is some of our real data where you can see on the left side a microbe that is currently considered a pathogen in the vaginal microbiome. And what you're seeing here is that there is actually huge variation in the uh, genetic composition here. And what we're seeing is that variation is also associated with a difference in symptoms. And we're really excited to start diving into what actually makes these different? And can we actually have a much more granular understanding of what that pathogen or disease state actually looks like? And then on the right side, what you're seeing is a microbe that is currently classified as healthy. So when someone would go to the doctor, would likely not be considered a pathogen. And again, what we're seeing is huge variation that is also associated with large variation in symptoms. And again, we're really excited to dive in and be able to provide people with much more specific information that can help them understand uh, their personal disease state. And we're really excited to be doing a lot of this research in partnership with both academic and clinical leaders across the spectrum from thinking about metabolomics to thinking about how the overall communities interact with each other, um, all the way down into the clinic where we're working directly with doctors to think about uh, innovating on and deploying care pathways that are much more specific to the data that they're seeing for an individual patient. But as we always say, this problem is massive, right? Women and people with vaginas deserve so much better than the care that we're given for these extremely common and extremely frustrating conditions but this is not a problem that we can solve alone. And we're really excited to be building the future of female health alongside women and people with vaginas who want to learn more about their own vaginal health, find community, share their stories. Um, also alongside clinicians who are excited about using more precise and personalized information for their own patients. And then lastly, with research institutions and scientists who are interested in leveraging Evie's platform to help us in our mission of improving, improving female health outcomes. So we hope that we're able to work with some of you. We're so grateful for your support and in listening into this um, and excited to hopefully connect with people afterwards. You can reach out to me at priyanka at evie.com um, or check out Evie uh, at our website at evie.com. But thank you so much and excited to connect.